<laughs> start, start. So yeah, I apparently completely overdid my time. So I'm going to rush to the second talk, which is actually the longer talk in 10 minutes, right? So if this is all a bit frantic now, I'm sorry about that. But we're going to skip this one. We're going to talk about the Open Cypher project, right? <laughs> oh my god, I haven't done that in a long time. Anyhow, so the goal of the Open Cypher project, as Emil said in the keynote, right, is to deliver a full and open specification of the industry's most widely adopted graph database query language, Cypher, right? So that's what we're doing on this umbrella term of Open Cypher, right? And why are we doing that? to kind of develop the whole sphere, to give vendor independence, to make it easier for the graph to be picked up as the prevalent data model, right? And also to kind of get in, yeah, get, get in more ideas from the outside to make it all better, right? And how do we do that? Well, we do that mainly to three, three activities. Of course, language evolution, we talked about that, right, uh, just a second ago. We do that through the release of software architects, uh, software artifacts and language documentation. And of course, we are support, trying to support the community and uh, third parties to adopt Cypher, right? Um, so let's skip SIPs because we talked about those. Um, so software architect, architect, uh, artifacts. What we just released prior to Graph Connect is the MO2 of the grammar, right? So under the umbrella of software architect, artifacts, we understand everything that is needed in order to get started on supporting Cypher, right? And so big part is the grammar. Uh, another part that might come is a public implementation, kind of like a reference implementation, right? And so how does it look like? If you go to the Open Cypher repository, you'll find it. It's essentially a small set of XML files that are kind of really parsing toolkit agnostic, from which we then can generate grammar, from which you could also generate a grammar from, for a completely different toolkit, right? So uh, what we have done is the generator for Antler, which is a very common parsing toolkit. There's also a way to generate like these pretty railroad diagrams to kind of explore Cypher as a language. And this is actually online. You can just go to the URL, you find it on OpenCypher.org, and click around in the Cypher grammar and learn about it. Um, so the other side of things is how do you specify semantics, right? And so there are a couple of tracks there, right? One is the documentation track, and of course we have the name for J manual, and then we want to build that up over time to a full language reference and possibly even a mathematically formal specification at some point, right? And another side is uh, a testing track, and that's what we've done now. We released a TCK just prior to Graph Connect with essentially 90% of our existing acceptance tests from Neo4j kind of lifted out of the product and provided in generic form so that you can easily test your implementation of Cypher against the TCK, whether it's conforming or not, right? And uh, last not least, another thing we, we, we probably will be doing is an intermediary representation as kind of uh, a reduced way of kind of expressing the con content of a Cypher query, right? So these are kind of activities we're looking into. So let's talk a bit about the TCK. Um, uh, so what we're doing is we're, doing, we're using Cucumber. So you have get really readable files that kind of describe, you know, given this query, given this data, running this, you should get this and this result from your Cypher query, right? And you can, it's very easy to write a bit of glue code and then essentially test your own implementation, right? Um, and uh, yeah, the slides will be available, right? So just in case, because I'm rushing. So let's just have a quick look at that. Um, this would be such a feature, right? This is testing an, an aspect of optional match. So it starts with optional match acceptance feature, you know, given an empty graph and having created some data, you know, if I run this query with an optional match, right, I should get this result, right? So it's really, you should be able to read that as a user. That's the goal, right? And to kind of read through these files and kind of learn about the semantics of Cypher, essentially by just looking at these tests, right? Yeah. Um, there are some differences. I want to just mention that briefly. You find also that on the Open Cipher repository between Open Cipher and current product Cipher. The, and the reason is that we want to reevaluate some things, remove some things. But the goal will be, from a more product perspective, to align these eventually. Right? It's just essentially that difference is us taking a step back and thinking about which part of Cipher are we going to standardize uh, as we move forward. Right? Because of course, standardization is a great opportunity to kind of clean up a bit. Right? Um, and last not least, and I'm really happy I got the time to show this slide, 
we're really, really seeing uh, people picking up Cypher, right? Just in the couple, last couple of months, a lot of lo new community projects have popped up. There's now a graph database rookie in Python. I think there's a Postgres-based system that I'm kind of yearn to look at. I haven't had the time called Agents Graph. And there's a new system, but they didn't get back to me, so I didn't put them on the slide. So actually, we have three systems now packing up OpenCypher beyond Neo4j. We have a bunch of parsers out there. There's what Emil said, IntelliJ support. So, so this is a good point in time to starting getting interested in Cypher if you want to do open source and community stuff. Right? So it's kind of heating up. And I'm sure we're going to see more announcements in the future. Right? So wrapping up, because I'm stealing somebody else's time, um, next step for us is we will continue to improve on this. Right? What's released, work on language specification, maybe look into a public implementation. You know, we've dabbled a bit with Cypher on Spark. Let's see what happens there. I uh, have some internal prototype. And um, what I would love to see next is somebody else's implementation of OpenCypher. So if you're interested, go ahead. <laughs> All right, and, and check out, we have a new website as well, right? So all this is there. Cool. Yeah, sorry, I messed up a bit the time, but this is it. <laughs> cool.